had lost her consciousness for some seconds. And now, the other point. I was asked to publish her book, I believe in miracles in my German language. And I said, Lord, I don't know if I shall do it or not. If it is your will, then help me, then I bring it out. If not, hinder me. And I had a long conversation with Catherine Kuhlmann concerning the book, shall I bring it in Germany or not? In this private conversation with her, she prayed with me. And I said, Lord, if this lady has power given by you, then bless her, bless me. If the power is not given by you, please protect me. I will not come under wrong influences. I didn't feel anything. In the meeting before, 50 or 60 people collapsed, lost their consciousness, fell in trance. I was the only man I was standing like a rock. Nothing happened to me. I didn't collapse. I didn't lose my, my consciousness. You see, the Lord answered my prayer. On one hand, 50 soldiers are collapsing and I'm the only man. I'm not stronger than 50 American soldiers. I have not a stronger face and not a stronger soul and not a stronger body than these 50 people. But I had the protection of the Lord. You see, there are points, they are not clear. And even the friends of Catherine Kuhlmann, I mentioned Spraget and Dr. Cross, they are friends of Catherine Kuhlmann. They say Catherine Kuhlmann has a power in, in a collective subconsciousness. That's a bad business for her, for her friend Catherine Kuhlmann because this is the evidence that the healings of Catherine Kuhlmann would have a mediumistic character. But it is very difficult to explain this lady because there are good points and there are some strange points. I am waiting, waiting, till the Lord gives me a clear insight in the work of this lady. I do not believe that it is given by the Holy Spirit. That is something to say. Pastor Russell, has believed. I will feel the questions for you. Yeah. Here, please. I heard Catherine Truman say on the radio with a tape that uh, God did not know that Judas was going to betray the Lord. I heard that. And if he did know it, then he was in cahoots with the devil uh, to use Judas as a uh, tool. And if you ask that, Captain Kuhlman, if he, whether he believed that God was in cahoots uh, with the devil to use Judas, I think you will get your answer uh, in regard to Catherine Kuhlman, whether she uh, is using uh, divine healing or whether she's a phony. You answer that question. I couldn't understand. He heard Catherine Kuhlman on the radio say that God did not know that Judas was to betray Christ. God did not know. Did not. Oh, that's crazy. And, and he also said, if he did know it, then he was using the devil as an accomplice uh, to uh, perform this act. What did he do? She said, if God did know that Judas was to betray Christ, God and devil were working together. If God did know, if God did know if he knew. then he was working with the devil connected. Yeah. It's a strange theology. <laughs> <laughs> He's telling you to ask her. You should ask Catherine Coleman about Judas. Yeah. I had another plan to go back to this boy. 
I've got to have my conversation with her. There are some, there are some warnings. I have the book here in my briefcase. I brought it with me because I thought we had the question of Catherine Kuhlmann. Her friend Spraggett says Catherine Kuhlmann experienced or has the out-of-body experience in the performed period. That means, he says, either she is in a half trance or in a full trance. You have this in the book, I have it here. The friends of Catherine Kuhlmann have, a, have such words. They, they, they confirm my position. It, uh, of course, I could not make marks because it's uh, a, a book out of the library. She, as he writes, she has the out of body experience and sometimes is in half a trance, sometimes in a full trance. And Catherine Kuhlmann says if she is in a half trance, she even does not know that she is Catherine Kuhlmann. That is the style near to, to spiritistic media, but religious, religious media. But of course, Catherine Kuhlmann says, it is the power of the Holy Spirit, but I do not believe it. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. If you have the chance, read this book. It's in your library in Cincinnati. Catherine Kuhlmann, the woman who believes in miracles, most enlightening are the three last chapters because there is a psychology of the healings of Catherine Kuhlmann. The first, the, the first ten chapters are only reports of healings, that means nothing. But the last three chapters are very enlightening. At the moment I'm reading this book. Well, what happened after the 50 soldiers uh, collapsed? What explanation did she give? Why? Yeah. She said, the power of the Holy Spirit. I do not believe it. That 50 soldiers, one after another, is collapsing by the Holy Spirit. Unbelieving voice. But I will not hear this lady. I, I say, I will, my mind is open for co to be corrected, but so far, I do not believe that these are divine healings. You? Uh, I'm talking about Catherine Kuhlman, and of course, our standard for what we believe in practice is always the prayer of God. I believe we understand that point clearly. Now, if this is true, Catherine Kuhlman, uh, what do you think about Clement Freeman? Now, I think. I am not legalistic. I would say if there are no men to preach the gospel, then the women must preach. I'm not legalistic, but America has ministers. I think in, in your country it's not me that women are preaching, but if they like, they can preach to the girls, they can preach to the women, but not to three or four thousand men. But my position is not legalistic. If God has given a commission to her, of course it would be better if, she, if she's only preaching to, to a women congregation and to the girls. But this is not my point. Yeah, but that is, that is not the most important point. I think the character of her healings and of this strange hypnotic power that says 
more important? Yeah. Does it make a difference upon whether the person being healed has faith in the charisma approach or in the other? Must the person being healed have faith or can the healer do it alone? In James 5.14, it, the healing depends on the faith of the healer, not of the sick person. And the extreme people uh, say, well, you didn't believe, therefore your sickness came back. That's wrong. It depends more on the faith of the elders in James 5.14. Of course, the sick person must also give the life to Christ. In Indonesia, we have many, many healings, and even Muslims were healed. But when the Muslim didn't decide to, to follow Christ, the sickness came back. Only the Muslims who, give, who gave their life to Christ, they remained healed. So it is Indonesia. But the demonic healing, the person who is healed, is he, does he sell his soul by being healed? Demonic healing? Demonic healing. Does the person who is healed sell his soul? Yes, unconsciously. The sick persons do not know what kind of business they do. A person goes to the healer. He's healed by magic power. And the person does not know that from this day on, she or it, he belongs to the devil. It is unconsciously. But one day, when they try to follow Christ, they cannot do it. They are under a blockade. Even nominal Christians can be healed by, by magic power. And they do not know they have to, to give a terrible price. of magic healing, all kinds of healing. Healings of cancer, healing of polio, of paralyzed legs, and so on, and, and broken legs, and so on. I was several times among the labs in Scandinavia. You can have a broken bone, they heal it in, in 48 hours and two days. They have not to go to the hospital, if you have a blaster, they, in two days they heal a, a, a smashed bone by magic power. There are gigantic healings in this area, but only by people who are strong deacons. The boy said, How does one deal with a Christian scientist? How do you deal with a Christian scientist? You can only help if people are willing to be helped. So far in my life, I was not able to bring one member of Christian science to Christ. Not one. They are fanaticized, but the Lord can do a miracle with them. Would you explain the difference between spiritistic healing and spiritual healing? Yes. Spiritualism is only a religious form of spiritism. The spiritualists say we heal in the power of God, but it's the mediumistic power. The spiritistic healer, he doesn't care for God. He uses the power uh, of Satan quite openly. Can you give an example? For what? Give an example of spiritistic. Spiritistic. Harry Edwards in England has hundreds of healings. He's a spiritistic healer. He says, I can only heal if my angel is present. His angel is not an angel of light, it's an angel of the devil. He can heal all kinds of sickness. Harry Edwards is, is a very strong medium. And the spiritualistic healer was Edgar Cayce in your country. At the moment, we have a spiritualistic healer in New York. She's a member of a Pentecostal church. She heals by phone. You can phone her, she will tell your name, your sickness, and then she says, I will work for you, you will become healed. And very often she performs healing by telephone. So, so, first, then the second. 
No, he quoted, Dr. Unger mentioned examples. I have the same. Uh, last night I saw the story of a Luther minister. Out of curiosity, he went into a spiritistic circle. He has to give up his ministry. I have such cases. You must distinguish if a believer comes into a house where at the same moment spiritists are together uh, dabbling with table lifting or glass moving and the believer does not know anything about these people then the believer does not come into danger because God protects him but when the believer knows it before and goes into a such a circle the believer is, and comes under a bondage I had a, fr a young friend in Nuremberg in Germany he went into a meeting, he thought it is a Christian meeting, but there were spiritualists, religious spiritists, 60 people. He said on the last row he was praying and he felt a strange atmosphere and he prayed more. And then the leader of the service started with the meeting. Finally the leader said we cannot do anything, there are streamings against us. After the meeting my friend went to the leader what kind of fellowship is this? And he answered, we are spiritualists. My friend didn't know what, what is that. And he asked, what's that spiritualist? Then he got the explanation. And then he said, therefore, I felt this dark atmosphere and I, I prayed in my heart. You see, one young man chased away 60 spiritualists because he didn't know. But if he knows it, and he goes into such a meeting, then he comes under a bondage. Then he does not have a protection of the Lord. That's the difference. I know many ministers who are under a bondage. They are blinded. They cannot see the truth. They have no power of the Holy Spirit and their congregation is spiritually dead. I can name you such a minister. Dr. Oppermann in Kitchener in Canada. He's a Lutheran minister with a, a wonderful new Lutheran church built for some million dollars. I came to Kitchener and the elders asked Dr. Obermann, can Dr. Koch not have some meetings in our church? He answered, no, we don't need Dr. Koch, we don't need his messages, we don't have such things. You, I preached in another church, oh it was in the Missouri church in, in Kitchener. Then I preached in the Missouri church, they opened the door and during the week, the elders came, the elders were some believers among them, and said, Dr. Obermann says we don't have such things, but he himself practices table lifting with, with the women, his women congregation. He himself is a practicing spiritist and says we don't have such things. You see, blind, far oh, by spiritism. This man is spiritually dead and cold and his whole congregation is under a deep bondage. Such things happening in, in this country. The same in Los Angeles. It was an, uh, I don't know the denomination, a minister who came to me. He was healed by a spiritistic healer. But from this time on, he had depression, thoughts of suicide, and neurosis, and his whole ministry was scattered. Yeah. Therefore, I warn everywhere in the, in the world. I warn, I warn, and they laugh at me. I live in a small community in northern Indiana, and I have a very close friend, a gentleman who is a little past 30 years of age. In his childhood, he experienced very strong occult influence from his mother, from his 
The following is an address by Dr. Kirk Koch entitled, Miracle Healing, Their Magic, Suggestive, or Biblical Character. It was delivered at 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday, November 7, 1972 at the Covenant First Presbyterian Church in Cincinnati, Ohio. Healing for divine 
man is healing. Before I consider the problem of man is healing, I first want to report the example from Switzerland. During the revolutionary campaign in Switzerland, the farmer came and told me of the unhappy result of black men in the army. His point is contracted polio. The doctor was called in two days and the boy remained paralyzed. Since the farmer had walked with his son to be healthy, no matter what it was, he tried everything. Finally, he went to a notorious magician. This man healed the boy with the help of black magic, and his paralysis disappeared completely. For several years, everything went well. But when the son was 60 years old, the father found him in the stable, dying of a cup carotid artery. This had to fire out of the blue. The boy had previously shown no signs of unhappiness. On his son, however, the father found an ambulance from the magician. Opening the letter pouch, he found a piece of paper with the inscription, his soul belongs to the dead. This was proof enough that the magician had used black magic on the boy. White magic is even more widespread than black magic. Many Christian groups practice this form of magic oblivious to its demonic character. White magic is the fulfillment of the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 11 14 that even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. White magic is black magic under religious disguise. An example. A missionary to the Jews in North Africa by the name of Samuel reported one of their magic customs. When one of their children is killed, they take the towel, tie a knot in it, and say, in the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, be released from your sickness. Then they untie the knot, and the child gets well. This piece of magic charming is a counterpart to black magic. Another example. Germany. A woman told me that her relatives could heal any type of disease in both animals and humans merely through using white magic charms by adding the word in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the spell, the sickness would disappear. In spite of a family tradition of church story, the various spells and charms had been handed down in the family for several generations. Both the woman and her daughter suffered from nervous disturbance. <coughs> it was for this reason that she had sought the counsel of a minister. Her condition improved after the minister had prayed with her and later she became a convinced Christian. Yet another form of magic is the so-called neutral magic. It has recently been introduced into the practice of doctors of the psychosomatic school. Some believe that one can use neutral forces of nature for healing purposes. I have several examples, but they are difficult to classify. A young doctor who had a lot of work on his hand asked the leader of a psychosomatic seminar, Professor, how is it possible to get rid of work? The professor replied that the only sure way was to use charming. The doctor took his advice and discovered that the man with charming was a complete success. I have heard nothing of the after effects from this case, so I can make no comment in this direction. Another example. The young psychiatrist 
ask the principle of a psychiatric clinic the same question. How can I get rid of war? He was given the following advice. Find the black thread around the walls and tie as many knots in the thread as you have walked. Then repeat the mask itself while placing the thread under a piece of fabric. That's how you can get rid of the unsightly thing. The psychiatrist at first thought it was a joke, but he was finally forced into trying it out. The experiment turned out to be a success. The war, in fact, disappeared. The advice in this particular case was not neutral then. This strange recipe is to be found in the so-called six to seven book of Moses, which contains only black or white magic charms. Until now, this supposedly neutral form of magic has not proved its own neutrality. My counseling work continually supplies evidence to the effect that magic in any form is the word of the devil, whether it stays under the black, white, or neutral flag. To separate the different fields of healing, I want to outline a few things. Magic healings have demonic character. Suggestive healings have more or less human character. Biblical healings have divine character. Magic healings have depth and lasting effect. Suggestive healings have no depth and lasting effect. Biblical healings have depth and lasting effect. Regarding the effect on the spiritual life, it can be said, magic healings damage the spiritual life tremendously. Suggestive healings often leave the spiritual life untouched. Biblical healings strengthen the spiritual life. The next part concerns healing by suggestion. As a magic, three main areas can be pointed out. Healing by suggestion based on respiratory is more of a magic. Then there are healings by suggestion based on inertia. Then there are religious suggestions mainly practiced by the extremists, by the sect. I'm sorry that if interesting things cannot be treated thoroughly because of lack of time. After the message, we have time for questions and answers, and you may ask your question. Few brief words. Suggestion and mesmerism is often practiced by nature healers, homeopathic doctors, lay practitioners, mesmerizers. A well-known evangelist in Germany stated that 90% of the lay practitioners are working with star powers, and only 10% are using same magnets. This evangelist may have been right. Suggestion and hypnosis is used by medical practitioners. He remains in the value of hypnosis is debated. Many doctors reject it because it means an invasion into the personality of the individual. Some use it for diagnosis, some even for therapy. As Christians, we are well advised to be careful in this manner. A short example from Switzerland. A believing Christian woman has a soul led on the body. The doctor hypnotized her. The pain disappeared within two minutes. Afterwards, the Christian woman showed marked changes in character. She became ill tempered and got very mad. Sometimes she threw a blade or glass against the wall or tore down the violin from the ceiling. These things began to happen only after the treatment by hypnosis. The third department of suggestive healing are the religious suggestions. Among Christians, that is the most perplexing field of our time. It 
must be said in principle to strong empathy. Religious suggestions are not divine images. If religious suggestion the subject of feeling is the religious person, in biblical feeling, the subject of feeling is the living God. Religious suggestion has no best effect to do or not. Biblical healing do have the best effect and do not. It is seen that the constant confusion is better among Christians. As a matter of fact, it is rather difficult to distinguish between the two. One must not have only have an act of knowledge, but also the gift of discerning of spirit in order to keep both separation. So the number. A million friends and a dear to spirit with the land. An engineer with a paralyzed leg, a hand laid on him by William Graham. He got better. But then, day after day, the old paralysis returned. After about two weeks, it had returned, returned in its full strength. This improvement had not been divine healing but only religious suggestion. But now we will discuss the most important area of healing, biblical healing or divine healing. I do not use the term faith healing because this expression is misused by the ministry. In order not to start out on the wrong track, the basic word must be said, salvation by faith in Christ more important than divine healing. Not healing, but conversion in the new birth is the main thing. Let me content this with this sentence. Forgiveness must be healing can be. This must be said so that the emphasis of the biblical book may not be shifted. This is the way open to a full appreciation of the biblical truth of divine healing. Today, we like to pass this judgment on sex and extremists without realizing that we stand under the same guilt and condemnation. They have too much, we have too little. They have all this a high temperature, and we have all this a low temperature. They sit in a stove, and we sit in a refrigerator. They must repent because they often mistake emotion for spirit. He must repent because they have lost faith in God's word, and have forgotten how to thank God at his word. The New Testament speaks of nothing. Mentions them 125 times. Basically, there are two forms of divine healing. There is a special gift of the Holy Spirit, the so called Sharisma Yamato. That's the Greek word, the original word of the Jesus and some of his disciples demonstrated this gift in their lives. Besides this, there is the simple laying on of hands and prayer. We find this in James 5, 14, or Mark 16, verse 17 and 18. In the course of church history, this charismata, gift of the Holy Spirit, has been rarely used. A few of the old church fathers, like Irenaeus, Tertullian, Augustine, Hieronymus, still knew something of divine living. When this gift appears again with them out of level and friends of opposition. Then there was quiet for many centuries. In the 19th century, the year of art for Truman and Johannes Sykes in Germany. In our time, there is much thought about faith healing, but in reality, there is a great lack of men of God who possess the express gift of healing even if divine healings had not repeated it. During my evangelistic campaign in North of Germany, the missionary's wife asked me to visit her sick house. She told me 
that her husband had been flown off from Tibet. He was operated on immediately. The surgeon made an incision and closed him up right away. According to his knowledge, it was too late. The nurse had ordered by the doctor to fulfill the patient's every wish. Poison was not long to live. The doctor said to the nurse, this man will leave the hospital only in a coffin. Now the visionary's wife saw that prayer and laying on of hands might still help him. I asked the other minister to come with me. The red shanks by Murphy to the seriously ill man. Then the missionary confessed and asked. Then he anointed his head with oil and raised with him and laid on hands. Already the next day the patient was up for a few hours. Three weeks later he was released and secured from the hospital. It was June 1957. Since that time, this missionary is healthy and working for the Lord. Jesus has touched him. How often have you heard this word, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever? But how little do we really count the big power in our everyday life? We honor Jesus by faith and obedience. His word will prove to be the truth today if we act on it. I come to the end because I will have much time for discussion. Jesus has not forgotten how to help and heal. It would be terrible if this would be left to the demons. No, his cross is lifted up upon this earth, and men who trust him can experience this victorious power. The Lord said to Master, If thou wouldst believe, thou shalt see the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord comes into our poor life if we trust him in all things. The Lord said to his disciples, He who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water in our life. The Lord Jesus is center of our life. That is the greatest miracle that can happen. This was only a short introduction. Now I'm willing to answer your questions. But please, short questions. And clear and distinctly, they can say they can understand you because they are the German plane and not an English plane.